Hello and welcome to another Redstone Basics tutorial video. In this video I want to talk about two game tick pulses because there are differences in two game tick pulses. First of all, let's start with the normal one that everybody probably knows. If you make a mono stable like this and set a repeat to one redstone tick, which is two game ticks, we get yeah, this pulse here. So also called short pulse, or some similar names. And the most uh, interesting feature about short pulses, which are shorter than three game ticks, is that sticky pistons lose their block in front. So just for the record, sticky pistons would also lose their block if you power them for one game tick pulse or with a zero tick pulse. But yeah, you mostly use this one here, so the normal two game tick pulse, if you want to have a short pulse, because it's the most compact and easiest way to create it. Then another uh, property of the normal two game tick pulse is that comparators and torches don't react to it. But you can create two game tick pulses where yeah, torches and comparators would react to. So we send a two game tick pulse through a torch tower and at the end skip piston lose the block. Those extended two game tick signals don't have a name. Um, I've seen some people in the commun community refer to them to as uh, three tick pulses or one and a half tick pulses, but this is just incorrect. Because it's a two game tick pulse or one redstone tick pulse. It's just that the signal, uh, you could say, is slightly longer or it's an extended duration. So from now, from now on, I would call them extended two game tick signal. And yeah, it works like this. So we power this comparator here. And also in the same game tick, power this sticky piston, which pushes the block to this position and takes two game ticks before the block arrives. And then the comparator is depowered and you get a two game tick pulse. And it's extended two game tick signal because the yeah, removal of the power source happens with a block event. In general, if you remove a power source with a block event, then you get this extended two game tick signal. The extended two game tick signal is a little bit fragile. So let's activate this one here. So we have another extended two game tick signal generator and we send it over Comparator, few torches, redstone dust, comparator into a block here. And here we try to have uh, two comparators behind each other and then the signal is lost. So this piston didn't extend. Here we also chained some comparators with a block in between and this tick piston lost its block because the uh, signal got transferred. Here we go up with torches. As you can see here, signal is still there. Then we go into repeater and the repeater would convert the extended two game tick signal in a normal two game tick signal. Still, uh, yeah, piston would lose the block. But if I try to tower, uh, to power a torch tower again, uh, nothing would happen. By now, you might be wondering what is the two game tick signal useful for. So first of all, of course, it's quite useful that you can send a two game tick pulse through a torch tower or through comparators. Uh, but it's also, for example, useful for selective powering. So here we have a repeater and a comparator attached to the same redstone line. And if I do the normal two game tick pulse, then only the repeater would react to. But I could power the same redstone dust line with the extended two game tick signal, and then both of them would react to. I use this, for example, in tree form. So it has practical uses. And some people that build um, compact doors sometimes use it um, to send a signal through a torch tower, for example. So it has its uses. Next, I'm going to go through a lot of possibilities how you can create the extended two game tick signal. So first of all, let's take a look at the four game tick into extended two game tick pulse converter. It's quite simple. So here we create the four game tick pulse. We power sticky piston with a redstone block in front. Then it takes two game ticks until the redstone block arrives in this position here. And then after two game ticks more, it's removed. So the power source is removed with a block event and we get a two game tick pulse, extended two game tick pulse. As you can see here, skip piston loses the block. Of course, you could do the same for cauldron, for example. Or you can push a solid block in front of a container block. Take the output of the comparator again. See here, the piston loses the block. 
It also works as yeah, retracting a block. So here we also create a four game tick pulse. Then this torch is depowered. Piston would retract. It also takes two game ticks before the block arrives here. Then after two game ticks more, it's pushed out. At the time I'm making this video, which is in the 111 snapshots, the observer just got added and currently gives out a four game tick pulse, um, but this might change in the future. But yeah, it's quite useful for creating a, an extended two game tick signal. So here we update the observer for repeater. Then we have a sticky piston for block in front again. And then we create the extended two game tick signal. And yeah, it's dual edge. Also, if you depower the repeater again, then you also get one. Of course, um, if you do a quicker pulse, then it's not dual edge. It depends on the pulse length, of course. Um, I'll also quickly cover this because this might confuse some people. If you put a block in front of the observer, then nothing happens. But this the, has nothing to do with the way the observer acts. Uh, has to do with the way pistons um, yeah, react to signals. Um, so you get a three game tick signal, and as a consequence, the comparator will receive a one game tick signal. I can also quickly go back to the first example. I also use the repeater here to power this block here, um, which powers the piston. And would try to power the piston directly from the from the button. Then I get a three game tick pulse. So as you can see the sticky piston extracts and retracts. And this is to do uh, with the way pistons react to um, user inputs in contrast to yeah redstone signals coming from repeaters or comparators. Um, here's also a little example. This should explain it a little bit better. Um, so here we have a chain of sticky pistons with redstone blocks in front, and here we have a chain of repeaters. And you might think because it takes two game ticks before the block arrives here, then the next piston should react instantly and create a, a two game tick delay in consequence. But actually we create a three game tick delay because the piston yeah, waits one additional uh, game tick when it's activated by a block event. So you can see here the left line is quicker than the right line, because here we have always three game ticks of delay. To add a little bit more confusion or explanation, uh, here we have um, a repeater in between. So you might think, yeah, now it would take five game ticks, but it's actually a four game tick delay. And here we also have a repeater on two ticks, so it's also four game ticks of delay. As you can see here, both lines activate at the same time. So here we have another dual edge extended to game tick pulse generator. We push a redstone block from one position to the next, and at both positions we would power redstone dust. And because yeah, block 36 doesn't power anything, the redstone dust is depowered while the block is moving, and then torch would turn on and off. You can see here, it's dual edge. So if I put the block here, also lose the block. Okay, so another possibility to create the extended two game tick signal is um, using a sand block. So what happens here when we depower the piston, it would pull up the sand block and uh, it always takes two game ticks before sand starts to falling. Um, so after two game ticks, the sand block would uh, turn into a sand entity and fall down. And this is also yeah, a block event and Let's just see it. So the sticky piston would lose the block in front because we have a two game tick pulse. We could also use sand to make a converter. So here we create the normal two game tick pulse and this would convert it into an extended two game tick pulse because the sticky piston uh, would push up the block and retract before it would start falling. So it takes the sand the normal two game ticks to fall. So this is an odd one. <laughs> uh, so what happens here? We power this dropper, which points upwards. The item is shot into this chest. And here we block the hopper that would suck out the item um, from the chest with a redstone block. We also take an output from the chest with this comparator here. Comparators have two game ticks of delay. And after two game ticks, we power this piston, which removes the redstone block. So the, yeah. The uh, hopper is updated by a block event, and as a consequence, the power source, which is the item in the chest, is removed after two game ticks by a block event. 
So as you can see here, we create a to extend it to game tick pause. And yeah, this is just to get the um the redstone block back because the piston here would also receive um uh extended to game tick pause and it would lose the redstone block and it's just to get him back. You can see it pauses twice. So we have some yeah, more compact ways to create the extended two game tick signal. Um, here we power this comparator through this block here, and after two game ticks more, the power source is removed by a lock block event. And this is the same with a torch, which also has two game ticks of delay. And here it's yeah, stacked up vertically. The next one is quite interesting. The normal zero tick pause generator also acts as a extended two game tick pause generator. So take a look at this piston here and compare it with this piston here, which gets activated a little bit later. There's a little bit of delay. As you can see that this one fires a lot quicker. It receives the zero tick pulse, but this one would receive the two game tick pulse. And the reason that this one receives zero tick is that gets powered directly with the redstone dust and here we extend the signal with comparison to two game ticks. Um, so I'll try to explain a bit how it works. It's a bit complicated what happens here. So first of all we power this gravel block with this repeater here then this redstone dust line turns on and this causes this piston here and this one to, to extract instantly and since this piston here is powered by quasi connectivity um, it's also getting powered, but yeah, if you power something with quasi connectivity, you also need to update it so the piston knows that it's powered. And that's what this piston here does. Um, so it extracts, and then this piston knows uh -huh, I'm also powered, also extracts. And since yeah, the gravel is gone, the redstone dust is no longer powered, and that's why this piston um, would also yeah, retract, and this one was also retract, and this also happens in the same game tick. So the piston extends and retracts in the same game tick. But this piston also receives the information that this is no longer powered uh, by this updating piston here. And then this piston would also extend and retract in the same game tick. And if you do that with, with a sticky piston, then the block is instantly moved in the same game tick to the new position. And in this case, the sand is instantly moved one higher, and then the sand is again powered by this repeater here. So that this redstone line would first turn on, then turn off, and then turn on again. And then it takes the normal two game ticks for the sand to fall. And you get the extended two game tick signal, which this comparator yeah, detects and sends through this torch tower here. It's a little bit complicated, but that's what happens here. So it's quite interesting if you, for example, power the gravel block with a Normal two game tick signal, then you only get the zero tick pulse. Because the signal is again too short for the comparator to detect or react to. Okay, so the next ones, um, they work without block events. Um, so the, you ca can make the extended two game tick signals even without block events. There's some exceptions, so let's take a look at it. Get okay, a two game tick signal on the Falling edge. You don't need that repeater even, can also do it like this. And there's another possibility to create it. I don't fully understand why it works in some instances and some doesn't, but all of those three work in every direction and every location, as far as I've tested it. Built them up in uh, 10 locations in each direction. So those are really reliable. Um, the next one is an odd one. This was shown to me by Myron Irio. If you don't know him yet, check out the link in the video description. It's definitely worth to check him out. And yeah, normally you would think if you power a comparator with the normal two game tick pulse that nothing happens. But in fact, still yeah, something happens. So you could send a signal through a comparator if you have another repeater in front. So you wouldn't act and also yeah, no, normal repeater doesn't get activated. But if you have another repeater in front, the update order gets changed. 
and then this happens. Um, this is yeah, not really that practical, but there's even gets gets even weirder. So normally you would think yeah, nothing happens in front of this competitor, but actually gives out a block update. And to make it even weirder, if you put the comparator on subtract mode, it doesn't give out a block update. So this is a very specific application, it's not too practical normally. So here we are at the end of the Reds tutorial, but I uh, want to use this uh, occasion to talk a little bit about Redstone in general. Because after watching all of this confusing stuff and exceptions and so on, some people might think, yeah, couldn't this be made easier? Why are all those exceptions? Uh, we want a more straightforward uh, redstone, like like in a PE version, we don't have all of those exceptions. Um, and on one hand, I of course, understand this argument. Uh, it might get confusing if you stumble upon something like this on accident. But on the other hand, I also have to see the, the other side. I mean, we have fun for redstone dust for, for so, so many hours uh, because of those little quirks, because they just give us new something new to discover all the time and also give us yeah more tools to work with uh, work, work with redstone. So we, we need to want to send up uh, two game tick poles at the torch tower. We, we can make it work. So all of this was probably not intended, but developers Dreadstone is just as great as it is at the moment because of uh, yeah, all of those little quirks. So, yeah, yeah, there's always two sides. It's like with everything, if you start a new game, of course, you're always overwhelmed by the possibilities. But if you get to know them, you appreciate them. And I don't think you could implement this in a more intended way as it is. But if you watch tutorials and so on, you can perfectly understand it and work with it. So by now I'm, I'm not surprised by anything anymore if something weird happens with Redstone because everything makes sense. So yeah, I just want to, to wanted to talk about this. Uh, let me know what you think about it. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye bye.